What blows my mind that it still takes me seven hours to get from London to New York. It used to, <laughs> back in 2010, be able to take me half that time. What, what, what happened? The Concorde ended its flight in 2003. 2003. Yeah, yep. Incredible aircraft designed in 1960. And everybody wonders, why is it we are not flying faster and we're actually going slower than we did with the Concorde? Yeah. So it's a great question. Uh, Aviation is incredibly difficult technology. iPhones and computers and everything else that advanced and aircraft haven't advanced as fast. And there's a lot of good reasons for it. It's an incredibly difficult space. You're flying people in air and you've got to fly them safely and efficiently and get to those destinations. You can't make the sonic boom that the Concorde made and that's a huge problem. It's why the Concorde stopped flying. So is that the main technological challenge you're trying to overcome? Is the sonic boom or is it um, the efficiency mm -hmm. end of it? What, what it, is it? It's, it's actually both of it. I mean, you can fly fast. There's no problem doing it. Military jets do it all the time, right? Mm. But they're burning a lot of fuel. And that's just not going to work for flying passengers from New York to London or London to Hong Kong. you got to be able to fly at a reasonable cost and you got to be able to fly without making a sonic boom, without disturbing people on the ground. It's a very loud, disturbing sound. And that's critical. And that's what Spike Aerospace has been developing a technology to cut that sonic boom down tremendously. So the aircraft that you're working on, delivery is by 2023? That's right, towards the end of it, yes. How much is it going to cost? Well, just like, uh, unlike I phones and cars where you actually buy the, air, uh, the phone, you don't buy a 747. You <laughs> buy a ticket on a 747. So what's more important is to figure out how much is it going to cost a passenger to fly in this aircraft. And it's going to be about the same as a business class ticket. But so who are you selling to? Because it matters to it, the airline or the, it, it, or the it, billionaire it, who's it, going to be it, buying it. It does, yeah. The airlines are going to buy it. We've worked with two airline, major airlines. Uh, they're working on developing a partnership and what the aircraft needs to be to meet their requirements exactly. So you don't have a price point yet? No, we do. <laughs> so, and what is it? It's $125 million for the aircraft. Cool, $125 million. Yeah. What sort of demand, where is the main demand for this very speedy, perhaps slightly more expensive form of travel coming yeah. from? So 2017, 4 billion people got on a plane and flew somewhere. Yeah. In 10 years, there'll be 6 billion people flying somewhere. Off those, there's about 13 million passengers that are very interested in flying supersonic and have the means to fly somewhere faster. I have a reason. I fly, I, in the next three months, I have 10 trips coming up. I've been to London, Geneva, to Hong Kong, mm. to LA. So time is critically important to a lot of business travelers. They're going there, they need to do, get to a conference or a meeting, and they need to get back to the, at their home or to the next destination. So it's that 1%, basically, the wealthiest in the world. Where are they based? No, no, actually, the people that we're targeting, I mean, the business billionaires that are going to buy the aircraft, yes, they are the one okay. percenters. But the people that typically go in the meetings, they're business managers and executives. Okay. They're, they're your typical senior executive in a company, yes. But they're not the one percenters necessarily. They need to go there and manage a plant. A plant is down, there's a labor strike, there's engineering issues, and they need to go f figure it out. I have a, a good friend of mine that's building a manufacturing plant. He's, he's a mid-level manager. He's a great guy. But he flies a lot, and it's a lot of time. So he He's the person that's going to be flying this aircraft. There's a bit of competition out there. Lockheed Martin has been asked by NASA, NASA to yeah. be looking mm -hmm. at this sort of supersonic form yeah. of travel. Yeah. How do you ensure that you're going to be the first one there? Because I think they're trying to get on tap by 2021, and you're going to be a couple of years yet later. Well, you know, it, there's a lot of companies approaching it in different ways. Uh, Lockheed Martin is actually developing a quite supersonic aircraft like we are. What they're doing, though, is they're doing a test aircraft. It's a single pilot, okay. no passengers. It's only one pilot. It's only designed to fly about a 500 miles total. So you wouldn't even fly across the ocean. So it's, it's strictly a test aircraft. Eventually, then they would have a commercial aircraft, and you know that's that's the goal that they want to do. So we were already designed a commercial aircraft that will fly by the end of 2023. And of course, back in 2014, the aim was to have a, a vehicle, like an aircraft, by 2018. What sort of pushed the timing back? Is it just perfectionism? Is it is it the technological challenges and? Uh, are they being overcome right here in Boston? Yeah, they are. There's, there's an incredible amount of innovation going on here, as we heard from the last speaker. Uh, there's a lot of resources and partnerships you have to develop. So time and aircraft, it, it's, uh, you have goals and targets where you want to meet, but there's a lot of pieces that have to come together. Mm -hmm. You have to have those partnerships. You have to have engines. You have to have the regulators and governments that are going to back it and allow the aircraft to fly in the first place. And all that takes time to develop and mature and get the, get the movement. you got to get customers, and this is a new aircraft. So it takes time. It's, it's tremendously exciting, and it's happening.